Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Embers of Rebellion Episode 5 Chapter 39 Lucian I couldn't sleep, all night I tossed and turned, knowing they were both over there and so close yet out of reach. It gave me a little comfort knowing Tatum was there with them, yet everything screamed I should be the one protecting them. How I had failed. No wonder she hated me. I would hate me too if our roles were reversed. Now a few past incidents made sense, why I could never hold a relationship to save my life, why I had trouble with my life, the sudden bouts of depression seeping into me. Now it made me wonder if I knew all along on a subconscious level, and it was my body trying to stop me from making the decisions I sometimes did. She felt it, felt it all, and didn't say anything. When she kissed Dante, the pain that she caused was brief yet painful all the same. How did she endure years of my infidelity? I may not have known about her but she certainly knew of me, which made me groan at how stupid I was. The countless brothels, the woman, and she endured that pain over and over for countless long years. Five years, for some reason, that number kept popping up in my head as I tried to dredge up any memory that would lead me to her. Why was that number so significant? Besides the obvious, of course. Yet something nagged at me, tugged as it should matter to me. Five years, five years I muttered under my breath when I felt my breath leave me altogether, and I gasped, nearly choking on my own spit as I lurched upright. The Alpha Meeting, the fairy girl, the girl who snuck out on me the following day. Could that have been her? I was pissed off that she left before I even woke, something told me it was Marin, yet I never saw her face, and Dante woke me the following day, and she was gone. He said he passed the girl and I remembered it irritated me because I was angry he didn't stop her. That girl has remained in my thoughts for five years already and was one of the many things that got me through each night. Finding myself often thinking of the girl dressed as a fairy, yet I could never explain why she would randomly pop into my thoughts. Dante had told me to look for her, yet when I checked the registry, I could never find her name, which now made sense, she was underage. She wasn't supposed to be on that side of the hotel, which was for only adults and... and future alphas. She shouldn't have been where I was, and I always thought it odd when I went over the registry of attendees. I could never find anyone who even resembled her. No ID had me jumping the way Marin did. I had spent weeks searching the hotel database, yet she would have been in the kids' section. I cringed at that mental thought, don't go there. Creepy, yet I remembered that night kind of. I remembered how I was drawn to her, and no matter where I turned, I found myself in her vicinity again drawn to her like a moth to a flame. It had to be her, and it made sense why she would have run. I spent weeks angry that she ran out on me, but it suddenly made sense because if Alpha John was her father, I could imagine the trouble she would have gotten if she had been caught with me. That was back right in the middle of a brutal war when land was being divided again after we brought out half of Silverstone Pack lands, they fell under hot water with debts and we settled those debts in exchange for a good-sized chunk of their territory giving us ownership to half the city. A war ensued too many lives were lost to violence in the streets, constant attacks, though my pack killed just as many as John's did, we weren't completely innocent. Alpha John was furious and our feud only got worse. It added fuel to the fire so it made me curious what changed between my father and John that they were now willing to marry me off to his daughter. What were chances I would be mates with one of his daughters, just not the one they were trying to make me marry? Nothing made sense, my father, hated Alpha John, but now they seemed amicable, friendly, and it made me wonder what John had over him. My father was not a man to back down to his rivals, 
more like stomp on them and kick them to the curb. My phone buzzes beside where I lay, and I glance at it to see Tatum's number pop up. Quickly opening it, I answered the phone. Everything okay? Yes, Marin went for a run. Should I follow her or stay with your son? Um, do you know where she went? I asked, but she said it was none of my business and walked out, just give her space, if she isn't back after an hour though, ring me, okay, boss, Tatum says, hanging up. Going through my phone contacts. I quickly rang her, hoping Marin would be more talkative on the phone, then face to face. We only seemed to argue when in each other presence, but I was slowly starting to understand why. What? Lucian, she answered after the third ring. She sounded tired, her voice strained. Tatum said you left the apartment, Zoe is there, I didn't leave by himself, and I figured your friend would watch over him unless there is a reason I shouldn't be leaving Valerian with him. No, Tatum is fine. He is safe. I was just concerned where you were going this late at night, the reserve, however, I am headed back home because someone fixed the fence again. I had it reopened yesterday afternoon, and someone keeps fixing it, Marin curses, and I hear her kick the mesh. I pressed my lips in a line knowing it was my fault. Ah, that may be my fault. Dante told me the fence was broken. I sent someone out to fix it, of course, it was you, she sighed. Well, I will stay on the phone with you, make sure you get home okay. How was I supposed to know it was intentionally opened, I am capable of getting home Lucian, and it's fine, a lot of use it as a shortcut, it is fine I can wait until tomorrow or something, she said though she sounded like she was almost breathless. Please. This doesn't have to be an argument just don't hang up until I know you're back with Tatum. Do you always go running this late? She doesn't hang up on me, so I figured she was giving in. No, then why are you running so late? Marin doesn't answer straight away, and I glance at the phone to make sure it is still connected. Because I need to. She finally says though it sounded more like a murmur and like there was more meaning to it than that. What do you mean? It doesn't matter, Lucian. Anyway. I am at my door. Your bodyguard is staring at me because I look like a rat from the rain. Can I go now? I just want to make sure you are home safe, she groans, the noise sounding annoyed. Oi, BFG. Tell your boss I am home, I hear her say before I hear Tatum. She is home, I hear in the background and sigh with relief. You might as well come in. It is pouring. I can't have you sleep out here, you can stay on the couch, I hear her tell him. Ah, just one second, I heard murmured before I felt the mind link open up. Are you for real right now? Are you seriously asking permission? I vaguely hear Marin say through the phone before Tatum's voice flits through my head at the same time she snaps at me through the phone. Either he can come in, or he leaves. I won't be able to sleep knowing he is outside freezing on my doorstep, Marin snaps at me through the phone. I take you got what she said. Tatum asked through the mind link. It's fine. I say to him and out loud so Marin could hear too. I cut the mind link and hear Marin sigh. I will grab you a towel, and if you get beaten in the morning by a petite girl with an angelic face, it is just Zoe, I live with her, Marin warned him and I could only imagine the amused look he would have had at that. I hear Tatum grunt at that, and I smiled, amused that she would warn him she lived with someone, he already knew he would have noticed the extra sense. Okay, can I go now? Tatum is sleeping on the couch and I am tired, yes, Marin good night, I tell her, and she hangs up. I sighed now to convince her to let me mark her. I stared up at my ceiling, 
I couldn't help but smile despite the fact she hated me. She still named our son after me. Valerian was my middle name and my father's middle name. All the men in our family had the same middle name, well, except Valerian, obviously, which made me wonder what it was. Yet, yeah, my dad definitely had a thing for the letter V. Lucian Valerian Salas, what a mouthful that was growing up, yet I knew he named me also in honor of my mother Valerie with a mix of his name too. We had the Alpha meeting coining up soon, it wouldn't be long now, and I would have to put everything out in the open. I just hoped Marin would let me mark her within the next week. I wasn't so sure I could actually go through with forcibly marking her, not after everything I had already made her endure, and I didn't want to give her more reason to hate me. On the plus side, I now had more excuses to see her since we shared a son together. I never gave much thought to being a father, I have always wanted kids because it was expected, but I never really pictured children. However, meeting Valerian, it is all I wanted to be now, everything else, I just wanted my mate and son. Wanted to be a part of his life and hers if she would have me. Rolling on my side, I set my alarm. I had a pinky promise to keep and I had no intentions of breaking it. Chapter 40 Marin yesterday was rough, last night even tougher. I didn't get any sleep, my entire body was aching from tossing and turning. The mate bond grew stronger each time I saw him, and the pain of denying it was getting harder to ignore. I rolled out of bed and to the sound of soft murmurs. That meant Zoe was awake as I heard her trying to wake Casey in the room beside mine. Getting to my feet, I quickly opened my door to see her in all her bedhead glory. She yawns and smiles at me. Morning, she says, turning her attention back to Casey's open door before she does a double take. She stepped away from me, and Casey went to step out of her room when Zoe shoved her back inside the door and quickly shut it. Casey banged on the door. Just a minute, sweetie, Zoe said before gripping my arm. What happened? Did that bastard hurt you? I will kill him, she whispered yelled. Swear jar, Casey called through the closed door while I tried to figure out what had got into her. Hey. Zoe ushered me into the bathroom, turning me to look in the mirror, and I gasped at what I saw. Blood smeared my face, and the dark rings under my eyes looked like I got into a fight and was on the losing end of it. I reached for a washcloth and quickly washed my face, but no physical injuries were present. Must be a nosebleed, I tell her, which was something that was becoming more frequent. Whenever I saw him, it seemed to me that something would get worse, headaches nosebleeds. I blink at my reflection before leaning in when I notice the discoloration of the whites around my eyes, no longer white but blood red. What? I whispered. You need to figure out something soon, Marin, it's fine, I will go see a doctor, I tell her, though I knew it was pointless. No, you need to see your mate. Or mark someone, Zoe gasps, and I stare at her in the mirror. Her eyes were watery, and as she watched me, concerned. It's been four and a half years, Marin, and you are already deteriorating. What will it be like in another five years? How much worse? I shrugged. I had no idea, but clearly, that wasn't the answer she was after because she stalked off down the hall. The moment I stepped out of the bathroom, I heard a shriek before her voice reached my ears. The bodyguard right, geez, you scared the crap out me, walking into the living room, Tatum was sitting up. You get many breaks into sleep on your uncomfortable sofa. He groans, and I hear his back crack. He tosses the blanket aside before making his way to the kitchen and flicking the kettle on. Coffee. He asks giving Zoe the once-over, she was wearing her silky pajamas with kittens on them and rainbow toe socks. Nice socks, 
Tatum smirks, and she glares at him. He was barking up the wrong tree if he was going to mock her socks, she had an entire collection of those toe socks, and in the wintertime, she even liked to wear them with her flip-flops. She called them her winter editions flip-flops. She growls at him, and he purrs back at her, which shuts her up quickly before she pursed her lips and narrowed her eyes at him. Uncle Tatum, Valerian screams, rushing out. Anything would think they knew each other all their lives with Valerian's excitement. At the same time Tatum scooped him up, there was a knock on the door. That would be your father, kiddo, Tatum said, placing him down. Valerian moved to the door and swung it open before bouncing on his little feet. You came back, you came back, I pinky promised, didn't I? Lucian tells him, picking him up. He stepped into the apartment, and the apartment felt smaller suddenly, with two bulky men taking up space. Coffee, boss, Lucian nods to Tatum before Tatum turns to me. Coffee, what happened to your eyes? He says, shoving past the table and knocking a chair over. Allergies, I stated as he gripped my face with his huge sausage fingers. Zoe scoffs beside me, and he glances at her before raising an eyebrow at me when I swat his hands away. Lucian comes over and grips my face, and I stay away from his tingling touch. Allergies? He questions when Valerian suddenly speaks against me. Mum gets them all the time, and nosebleeds. She gets a lot of nosebleeds, Valerian says, and I press my lips in a line. Lucian looks at me, and his lips part before he nods and looks at Valerian. Well, Mummy needs to see a doctor. I will take her, he tells Valerian, and I went to object when Zoe adds her two cents worth. Good idea, she sees Dr. Mary at the Rogue Center, Zoe says, folding her arms across her chest, and I notice Tatum's eyes dart to her cleavage, and I glare at her. My mate is not going to a rogue center, Lucian states before realizing what he said to Zoe, who is also a rogue. And why is that? She says, dropping her hands to her waist and popping her hip. Oh, careful, Lucian, you may just get into an argument you can't win with her. Good enough for rogues. It should be good enough for everybody, or are you admitting that this city is discriminative? She says with a glare. Lucian says nothing, just turns away from her, choosing not to answer. Good thing, too, because Zoe was a firecracker before her morning coffee. Never cross paths with Zoe if she is in a bad mood and hasn't had her morning coffee yet. She may be small, but she got a good right hook. You only have to ask the pool boy to know that or Macy's brother. Okay. How about we get you ready for school Valerian, asks Lucian while walking off into his room down the small hall. Tatum hands me a coffee giving me a worried look before handing me an extra cup. For the boss, your boss. Not mine, I tell him stalking off down the hall to find my mate and Valerian. Stepping into the room, Valerian pulled his clothes out of the wardrobe while Lucian looked around. Stopping beside him. He takes his mug from my hand and sips it. Does not look like a kid's room, he mumbles to me. Valerian doesn't like a mess, I whisper back. You know I can hear you, right? Valerian asked as he laid his clothes on the bed neatly. Lucian chuckles and turns around and Valerian eyes his father's cup before going over to his little desk, pulling out two coasters, and sitting them on his bedside table. Lucian lets out a breath just like I had seen his son do many times when he found something relaxing. Apparently, coasters were relaxing. Placing mine on the coaster, I moved to his wardrobe, retrieving his shoes from the bottom of it and placing them beside his perfectly made bed. It was one of the first things he did. The moment he got up, he made his bed. I had even caught him making Casey's or remaking mine. 
That's one of the reasons I made sure to shut my door of a morning. Sometimes his compulsions became a little much. I was more a roll out of the bed of a morning and made the bed before I climbed back in it sort of person. We helped him get ready, and Lucian watched everything like he was learning something new. It made me nervous while I gelled my son's hair and flattened his collar when Lucian suddenly started unbuttoning his shirt. I just buttoned because Valerian whined about the collar not being completely wrinkle-free. How either of them could spot the tiny crease was beyond me. It isn't necessary I ironed it the other day, I can feel it, I can feel it, I know it's there, Valerian cried as Lucian undid the last button. I will do it, Lucian tells him, giving him a worried look as Valerian had a meltdown. Breathe, buddy. It isn't the end of the world, it can be fixed, Lucian states, walking out before stopping in the hall. He scratched his head before looking back at me. Where do you keep your ironing board and iron? He asks. Ah, the laundry where else? Well, mine is in my linen closet, he says with a shrug. See, I told you and Zoe it belongs in there, Valerian huffs. Yes, the dryer puts lint on the ironing board, they both say at the same time, and I fold my arms and raise an eyebrow. Lucian chuckles and shakes his head. Definitely, my kid, he chuckles, walking off to find the laundry. While the kids ate breakfast, I was onto my second cup of coffee when Lucian glanced up at me briefly while he cut Valerian's pancakes. I will be by at one to pick you up. Lucian states. Now, what did he want? It was bad enough I had spent my early waking hours with him this morning. And why is that? Valerian doesn't finish school until three, I am taking you to see the doctor, no, I will go myself. You don't need to come to a doctor with me, I am fine, I will pick you up at one, Lucian. I spat at him, and he pins me with a glare his aura slipping out, and my grip on my mug tightened. I will pick you up at one, it isn't up for discussion, Valerian glances between us. The tension in the room was so thick you could cut it with a knife. Tatum cleared his throat, and I was thankful when he changed the subject. Lucian ended up taking Valerian and Casey to school much to Casey's amusement. She happily kept asking if being alpha meant he could kill people and get away with it before asking if she could banish her teacher because she and Valerian said she looked like a poodle. I shook my head at that, but Lucian politely answered all her questions before offering to take her to school. Zoe ended up giving in when she got a call from Casey's father, who she had been trying to avoid since his parents found out about Casey. Walking through the hotel, I headed for my office. I waved and smiled at my secretary as I passed her before escaping into my office. Turning the lock, I moved toward my desk only to freeze. Alpha Callan was sitting behind my desk. His leg crossed over the other in a reclined position. Good morning, Marin. I thought it was a good idea, I stopped by for a little chat, I pursed my lips folding my arms across my chest. Is that so? I asked. Chapter 41 Lucian Valerian and Casey excitedly pulled me down the halls of their run-down school. The floor alone was filthy with scuff marks, and I shivered with disgust and had to fight the urge to start scrubbing the floor. The classrooms weren't much better, the desks falling apart as the chipboard flaked. Some kids were even sitting on milk crates. I looked around to ensure this was a school and not some homeless shelter. Valerian showed me to his desk, and his desk was definitely the cleanest one in the room. I watched as he removed a white tablecloth from his bag and set up his desk. His pencils sat neatly in a row as he placed each one out carefully. However, Casey opens her pencil case and upends it on the table and I see him cringe before he glares at her and starts rearranging her pencil in a straight line. I didn't want to touch a thing in here, 
this place was a bacterial infection waiting to happen when the teacher came in, and I had to do a double take of the woman. She indeed had a poodle's hair, like she chose the style out of a dog magazine. It was short and curly on top, and then a poof of hair cascaded to her shoulder, her round glasses perched on the end of her nose. She taps her ruler on the desk, trying to grab the student's attention when the ruler snaps, and she stares at it before tossing it over her shoulder. It landed in the bin, making me wonder how many rulers she had broken. Oh, Alpha Lucian, and why are you here? She looks around nervously at the students like she thought I was somehow a danger to them. My son, I tell her, pointing to Valerian, and she giggles. The sound was more like a hyena, she was a strange lady. She waves me over, and I glance at Valerian, who rolls his eyes at her. I gave him a pointed look at his rudeness, but I now understood why he called her a poodle. I had to fight the urge to straighten her poofy hair as I walked over to her when I got a whiff of something that smelt strangely like weed, the kind you smoked. I sniff the air as I stop next to her. Are you high? I whisper to her. You would be too if you had to teach this lot, want some, got a bit left, I blink at her, she just offered me drugs, I glance around the classroom wondering if I imagined it. Surely she didn't? What sort of school was this? Ah oh no, but I, my son, and Casey will be leaving now, I tell her, motioning for both kids to come with me. Valerian starts picking up his stuff off his desk when the woman taps my shoulder with her finger. Which in turn made me glance at her. I'm sorry, sir, but you are not on either of their contact lists. I cannot allow you to take those children, he is my son, and I brought Casey here, I tell her. Unless you are on the documentation, I cannot allow you to remove them from class, and as far as I know, Valerian has no father. Marin Summers never mentioned you being his father, he is a rogue, sir and you cannot just come into a school and claim a child as your own. We have rules and regulations. Rules, I wondered briefly what their practices were on drugs and teachers offering parents to get high. This woman was getting on my nerves, not only was she high as a kite, but she also looked ridiculous and was unfit to be teaching primary age children or anyone for that matter. Valerian, Casey, grab your stuff, I tell them. The entire class watched on as MRS whatever her name frantically stepped in their way as they moved to the front of the classroom. Sir, I am sorry, but I can't allow you to take them, she screeches. Ignoring her I reached over and grabbed Valerian's hand, tugging him gently over to me when her hand fell on my arm. The growl that tore out of me made her quickly step back away from me. Touch me again and you will find yourself out there with the forsaken, I grit out, and she gasps. Casey rushes over to me, stepping beside Valerian and I turn on my heel leaving the classroom. This was unacceptable, and I couldn't believe Marin would allow our son to be taught here by a high woman. What was she thinking? Where are we going, Dad? Valerian asks. Anywhere but here. I tell him stalking off down the hall. I slow my steps when I see both kids struggling to keep up with my long strides. Ah, and today is the show and tell, I brought Mr. Scruffy, Casey whines. You show Mr. Scruffy every week, Casey, Valerian tells her. I do not, you do too, N.A., aha, you do, every show and tell. Valerian and her bicker on the way to the car. You can do a show and tell at home. Dante will love to hear about Mr. Scruffy, I tell her, needing them to stop arguing while I thought of what to do about this entire schooling situation. When my phone rang, I stopped just outside the school's entrance and pulled it from my pocket. Marin's name pops up on the screen, so I answer it. Why has the school rang me to say you have kidnapped Valerian and Casey? I have done no such thing. 
Technically I am still on school property, I tell her. Valerian's teacher just rang me, Lucian. Where is my son? Beside me, with Casey, do you know his teacher is a stoner? I whisper the last part through gritted teeth. She falls quiet for a second before I hear her sigh. Yes, most are, a lot of the teachers there are from the rogue commune. What do you expect? It is unacceptable, well, I have not got time for this. I am in a meeting with, ah, uh, with someone, that's fine, I will watch them. I am not leaving them with her, no, Lucian, they need to be in school, and I am supposed to pick up Taylor today, and who is this Taylor? I demand. If she has a boyfriend, he will be very much a dead one. Hey, Macy's daughter, it's my turn to pick them up today, I sigh, looking back at the school before heading back into the corridor. I stop and look at all the open classrooms before glancing down at Casey and Valerian. You know which one is Taylor's class? Lucian, you can't just kidnap other people's kids, Marin screeches through the phone at me. I'm not. Get Zoe and Macy to ring and give me permission to take them. You have five minutes, I tell her, hanging up. Macy was in our class, Dad, Valerian tells me. Great, I start off walking back to the classroom to see his incompetent teacher. Pushing the door open, the teacher jumps before a smug smile splits onto her face. I see you come to your senses before I had to ring the authorities. She says. Yes, I have. Which one of you is Taylor? I ask, and a little girl at the back raises her arm in a cast. PSST, Marley, we going with my dad, we breaking out of here, Valerian tells her, and her eyes dart to the teacher. Oh, right, stranger danger, I thought, I would technically be kidnapping that one when the teacher's phone suddenly rang. She answers while getting between the rest of the class and me. Like her tiny withered frame would stop me. Hello, Miss Summers, I tap my foot impatiently, listening when her eyes dart to me before she looks at Taylor and shakes her head. Miss Summers, I can't allow him to take her, oh, oh right, well put Miss Aldrin on then. The teacher chats to whoever she was handed over to when the teacher suddenly holds the phone out to me. I raise an eyebrow at her. Miss Aldrin wants to speak with you, I take the phone from her grip and place it to my ear. Hello, are you seriously kidnapping our kids? Not kidnapping, babysitting, this is not a school, I tell her. Well, if you don't like the schooling Mr. Solace do something about it. It is the only school here for rogue children but I swear to God you try to take my daughter out of this city, you won't need to fear the forsaken. Alpha or not, I will skin you alive and put you on ant's nest, are you finished? I ask her. Yes, I trust Marin and Zoe's judgment of you. Now put Taylor on. She will not go with a stranger, Macy tells me, and I walk over to the girl and pass her the phone. She talks to her mother for a second before grabbing her school bag, and she nervously hands the phone to her teacher when Casey grabs her hand. We leave the school, and I put the kids in the car before jumping in the driver's seat. I look in the mirror at the three kids. Now, what do I do? Three where are we going, Mr. Valerian's dad, Taylor asks, and my eyes dart to her in the rearview mirror. I think for a second, I have never babysat a child in my life. What about the movies? We can't go there, why not? I ask them. Because we are rogue, it isn't in the rogue areas, Casey says, playing with her MR scruffy dog that was missing an ear and an eye. Well, today you can because you are with me, but first I need to ring Uncle Dante, I tell them pulling my phone from my pocket and dialing his number. I listen to it ring. 
We have until 12.30 plenty of time to watch a movie before I have to pick up your mother, I tell Valerian. Can we watch the new Trolls movie? I saw an ad last night for it, Casey chirps excitedly. Oh yes, I want to watch Trolls, Taylor says. Trolls Valerian says. Majority rules. We will watch these Trolls, whatever it is, I tell him. Dante, I say when he answers. Yep, what's up, we are going to the movies, you're not my type, it's not a date, fool, are you saying I am not dating material, Dante says. No, but you are babysitting material, ah. Fine, but you're paying for our non-date, and I want a snow cone. What are we going to see? Apparently trolls. Never heard of it, H0R00R. Ah, I glance at the kids in the back. What are the trolls like the scary kind? I ask them. These ugly monster things they love, Valerian answers folding his arms across his chest and pouting. I think it is an action movie, fitting maybe trolls under a bridge or something, I tell him. Ah, fine, and why are we going to the movies? I need help babysitting, I tell him. You need help to babysit your son? He asks. No, I have acquired two extras for the day. Chapter 42 Marin you look worried, Callan states. He leaned forward before standing up, he motioned toward my chair, and I walked over to it before taking my seat. Callan takes the seat on the other side of my desk. No, I kind of expected it. You here too, what? Threaten me about telling Lucian about Valerie? I ask while pulling my phone from my pocket and sitting it on the desk. You think that little of me? Well, you did let your mate do you, so what else should I think? I never intended for that to happen. I loved Val, she. I was coming to claim her and she always hid how bad it was, BT, you think I wouldn't take it back if I could. I didn't care to hear his excuses, and I knew Tatum would be lurking around, so if needed, I only had to call out to him. What do you want? I ask him. Let Lucian mark you, I fold my arms across my chest and sit back, I didn't expect that. No, don't be stupid, Marin. Do you want to turn out like Valerie? And whose fault is that? I spat at him. Stubborn woman, you're just like her. Set in your ways, marking me will solve nothing, five years I lived with him sg around, am I supposed to forget that, forget him turfing me out in the rain when I tried to tell him? Callan scrubs a hand down his face. My son won't take anyone besides his mate and I need some kind of leverage against your father, my father is not my issue, don't be so stupid. I am trying to stop a war, and you think I am the answer to it. My father won't care if I marry Lucian or mate and mark him. He hates me and me having a kid to him will only make him hate me more if he finds out, you have no idea what's at stake here, for you or me. Both. Then tell me I am not a mind reader you need to be either transparent or get out of my office, I know you don't trust me, Marin. But I am trying to do the right thing here, you're right, I don't so cut to the chase. What is it you really want? I want my son to be happy. I want my grandson to be a part of his life, he pauses and sighs heavily. I want to make up for the past. I want to do what's right by Valerie, what she would have wanted, he says, and I chew my lip. How does letting Lucian mark me help you with my father, because when does, you are going to announce whose daughter you are, excuse me. Lucian won't mark Ava now he knows he has a mate, I am not sure I understand what you are getting at, I told him when my phone started ringing and vibrating on the table. I glance at it and so does Callan, who motions me to answer it since it was the school. 
The moment I answered, Valerian's teacher was screeching at me through the phone. I jerked the phone away from my ear and placed it on the loudspeaker, so I didn't rupture an eardrum. Callan shook his head while I tried to get her to calm down. Miss Summers, a man has come and stolen your Valerian and little Casey from class. He just walked out with them. He is claiming Valerian is his son, I growl, annoyed while Callan smiled, muttering under his breath. Alpha Lucian, ma'am? Yes, do you know that no good scoundrel? I roll my eyes. Alpha Lucian wasn't the most favored alpha among rogues. Callan cleared his throat, and I sighed, knowing I had to admit there was no kidnapping, and Lucian is his father. Yes, he is Valerian's father, he took him to school for me this morning, I tell her, and Callan nods and folds his arms, obviously happy with my answer. I didn't get Callan, I thought for sure he would be here trying to warn me away from his son, not encourage me to be with him. I narrow my eyes at him, listening to her tell me I needed to fill forms out at the school, that Lucian had to hand in his ID, and yada, yada like anyone would actually be able to stop the feared Alpha Lucian even if he broke the law, he was the law in the city. I will speak to him, I assure her before hanging up. I grit my teeth and start searching my contact list for his number before hitting dial. He answered it after a couple of rings, and I snapped at him before he had a chance to speak. Why has the school rang me to say you have kidnapped Valerian and Casey? I have done no such thing. Technically I am still on school property, he states, and I rub my forehead before pinching the bridge of my nose in frustration. Valerian's teacher just rang me, Lucian. Where is my son? I ask through gritted teeth. I was beginning to get a headache. Beside me, with Casey, do you know his teacher is a stoner? He whispered, and I sighed. It was pretty obvious she was, I don't think a single teacher there was actually sober. Yes, most are. A lot of the teachers there are from the rogue commune. What do you expect? It is unacceptable, he snaps at me, and I move the phone to the other ear when suddenly Callan is holding out a tissue to me. My brows furrow when I feel something dribble on my lips and taste my blood coating my lips. I take it from him, and he watches me, his brows pinching together, and he opens his mouth but quickly closes. Well. I have not got time for this. I am in a meeting with, ah, uh, with someone, that's fine. I will watch them. I am not leaving them with her, watch them. He wouldn't even know what to do with them. Yet I was stuck here in this ridiculous meeting with his father, but I didn't want to tell him that and have him get it stuck in his head that I was allowing him to mark me. No, Lucian, they need to be in school and I am supposed to pick up Taylor today, and who is this Taylor? He demands, and I could hear the burning anger in his voice. Callan chuckles, and I raise an eyebrow at him. Jealous. Callan mouths to me. Hey, Macy's daughter, it's my turn to pick them up today, I sighed, shaking my head, amused that he thought Taylor was a man. You know which one is Taylor's class? I hear him ask one of the kids. Lucian, you can't just kidnap other people's kids, I tell him. I'm not. Get Zoe and Macy to ring and give me permission to take them. You have five minutes, he abruptly hangs up, and I curse, and Callan chuckles. He thought you were seeing someone, I know my son, and he never gets defensive like that, Callan laughs. He has no right to be anything, I tell him before walking to the door and asking the secretary to get Macy and Zoe. My son may have a reputation, but he is a good man, far better than me. He would be a good father, Marin, what about a good mate? Can you promise me that? Callan sighed heavily. Look, you want your son safe, right, protected. 
Lucian is the key to protecting him, I have protected him for years, and I don't need Lucian's help or your strange help if that is even what you are doing or trying to do, Callan went to say something when the door burst open. Macy and Zoe rushed in. Macy seeing Callan, glares at him before pointing an accusing finger at him. I swear, Alpha, if your son has hurt my daughter, you won't be leaving this shroom. Macy spits at him while Zoe tries to calm her down. He is nice, I raise an eyebrow at Zoe. Well, he is to me, and I don't think he would hurt our kids, I spent all sht morning with him, and he only wanted to help with his son, Zoe explains. My son would never hurt a child. Tell me one article you have read where he has injured a kid, leave him be. He will just take them out or bring them back if he can't handle them, Callan offers Macy. And you? He was upset the teacher is a stoner, nothing malicious, I answer. Macy looked between us all, and I could hear her heart racing in her chest. She closes her eyes and sucks in a deep breath. Sorry, it feels weird. Besides these two, the only ones that I leave Taylor with are my mother and brother, can never be too careful, but my son means well, Callan says before looking at me. I bite my lip. What was his game? I dial Valerian's teacher's number. Hello, Miss Summers, yes, it is fine for Valerian to take the kids, Miss Summers, I can't allow him to take her, Macy and Zoe are right here. I will put Macy on, I already rang the school on the walkover, Zoe says, and I nod. And Zoe already rang the front office, oh, oh right, well, put Ms. Aldrin on then, I hand the phone to Macy, who snatches it up and allows him to remove Taylor from class before demanding to speak to Lucian. Callan raised an eyebrow but remained quiet. Hello, are you seriously kidnapping our kids? Well, if you don't like the schooling Mr. Solace do something about it. It is the only school here for rogue children, but I swear to God you try to take my daughter out of this city, you won't need to fear the forsaken. Alpha or not, I will skin you alive and put you on an ant's nest, yes, I trust Marin and Zoe's judgment of you. Now put Taylor on. She will not go with a stranger, Macy snaps at him. She quickly talks to her daughter before thrusting the phone in my direction and sighs, running her fingers through her hair before glancing at Callan. Why is he here? She suddenly asked, and Zoe turned her head to stare at him too. Just here to give Marin my wishes on the marking, more like force her hand, Macy mutters. Callan stands up, and we all take a step back except Macy. I swear she was either sometimes stupid or just fearless. We can catch up again later, Callan says before nodding to the girls and taking his leave. What was that about? I have no idea. just said to let Lucian mark me, I shake my head and laugh. Neither of them does, instead both eyeing the tissue in my hands. Maybe you should Marin, he, no, I, no, I repeat. Remembering every time I had to feel him with other she-wolves, every sht night. How could everyone just expect me to forget? Chapter 43 Lucian Well, that was not what I expected as we left the cinema. What the heck did I just sit through? It was kids' musical with rainbow-colored trolls singing about rainbows and farting glitter. Dante found the movie far more entertaining than he should have. I wanted to drill my own ears out, but the girls loved it, and Valerian glared at the screen the entire time, not impressed. I was with my boy, definitely not my cup of tea. Will you stop sniffing her? You are creeping me out, I snap at Dante as he places Casey back in the car. She fell asleep towards the end of the movie. Dante spent the last and had to carry her out. I need to need to know the soap Marin and Casey's mother use. The smell makes my mouth water. He says, sniffing her hair again. 
Or maybe it's her shampoo. He says thoughtfully. There is something wrong with you, I tell him, and he growls at me, which makes Casey stir and jolt awake as he clips in her seat belt before climbing into the passenger seat. Dante started humming and singing along as Taylor belted out one of the songs from the movie. I raise an eyebrow at him. What? It's catchy, he says, bellowing out the song like he was auditioning for the voice. His hands moved like he was orchestrating the musical. We stopped at the traffic lights and nearly jumped out of my skin when he tried to hit some high note and the girls in the back stuck their fingers in their ears while turning my head to look at him. What is wrong with you? Do you think it has a soundtrack? He asks. I was about to say no, not wanting to hear a single one of those prancing troll songs again when Casey leans forward between the seats. Yes, it has one on Spotify. Dante turns, blinking at her before a devious smile splits onto his face and he hands his phone to her. No, I tell him before suddenly Casey was using the voice commands on his phone, and next it was blaring through my car speakers. I growl while they all bop along to the lyrics I knew would be stuck in my head on repeat for the next few days. Right, that's it, I am dropping you home, I tell Dante, unable to take much more of him encouraging the girls to belt out each track. I pull up out the front, and he pouts. Out, I tell him, and he turns, ruffling Valerian's hair, and he growls, trying to fix it. He then turns to the girls. Got any more movie recommendations, Frozen, Frozen, they chanted. It has a singing snowman, Casey tells him. It's a movie date, also. Ask your mother what soap she uses. I need to get me some that, he says, and Casey sniffs herself. Hey? Your clothes, he says before reaching over and tugging on her braid. He sniffs it. Hey, maybe ask about which shampoo to? Okay, weirdo, Casey says, and he jams his fingers in her underarm, making her giggle. What's that? Hey, what you call me? Fine, fine, you're not weird, she shrieks as he tickles her. That's right, I am awesome, and way cooler than Mr. Cranky Pants here, he sings before punching my shoulder. Casey and Taylor giggle before he hops out. I shake my head, heading back to the hotel. I now had to take Marin to the doctor's. Even if that meant kicking and screaming she was going, I would toss her over my shoulder if needed and drag her out. Pulling up at the hotel, Zoe was waiting out the front. I had messaged Marin when I left the cinema to let her know I was on my way over, so I was a little peeved that she was waiting when her appointment was in 15 minutes. Getting out of the car, Zoe was already at the door and retrieving her daughter before she unclips Valerian's belt before I had a chance to even get him out. Where is Marin? I ask. In the kitchens helping the chef prepare for the dinner rush, did they behave? Yes, of course. Ah, Marin's appointment. Zoe bites her lip before pointing toward the restaurant. I don't think she is going. She said she had to wait for an electrician, though Macy said she would handle it. Also, the dinner rush is approaching, and she has to sort out next week's rosters, we have a few off sick at the moment. I slam the door, which makes Zoe jump, and I didn't mean to startle her, but I was livid. I specifically told her what time, and she insisted on working rather than looking after her health. You write with Valerian for a few hours, of course, he can help me in the children's play group, Valerian sulks. Why can't I come with you and mum? He asks, and my heart twinged at his upset face. Because daddy is about to drag your mummy to the doctors kicking and screaming, I tell him. But she said she would go? Valerian says. I sigh and Zoe shrugs before grabbing both of their hands. 
Good luck, she called over her shoulder as I stalled toward the restaurant. I shoved the doors open before walking into the kitchen, and Marin was rushing around doing God knows what. Marin, I called out to her, and she looked up. The entire kitchen stopped and looked over at me. Busy, not now, she says, turning back to her task of helping the chef. Nope, I growl, knowing she was planning on ignoring me. I walk over to the steel table she was stationed at before grabbing the knife from her hand. I could see the wide-eyed kitchen hands looking at me, but she was going. It wasn't up for discussion. What do you think you are doing? She snapped at me, trying to reach for the knife I pried from her grip. I toss it in the sink. You have an appointment, rebook, I am busy, she growls, and if looks could kill, she would have turned me to dust. Good thing they don't. I growl back at her before grabbing her around the waist as she went to reach for another knife from the block before tossing her over my shoulder. Lucian, stop, she shrieks before punching my back as I start walking out. Don't you dare, this is humiliating. I work here, put me down, are you going to walk? I told you I am busy, we are down three people today, wrong answer, I tell her before stalking out into the restaurant. Luckily it wasn't filled for her, and I wouldn't have cared if it was. I'll walk. I will gotch to walk, I ignore her, shoving the door open and honestly enjoying the view of her as in my face, if only she were sitting on it. Lucian, stop. I said I would walk, nope, I don't trust you, I tell her, walking toward my car when I feel her teeth sink into my back. Ah, you cannibal, I snap at her before biting her ass. I must say I enjoyed her shriek more than I should. Don't bite unless you want to be bitten back, I tell her as I open my car door. I can feel it bruising, she snarls before I deposit her in the passenger seat. I slam the door and point at her through the glass. Move, and I will put you over my knee if I have to, I warned her. She looked at me before realizing what I said, and the look of H0RR0R on her face was comical. You wouldn't. I would, I tell her before opening her door again. Go on, run and find out Marin, I dare her, and she looked like she was seriously considering it. I plug her seatbelt in when she folds her arms across her chest and glares out the windshield. Good choice, I tell her pecking her cheek and side of her mouth. You are crossing the line, Lucian Salas, and you are getting on my last nerve. Do I need to make you pinky promise from now on? She rolls her eyes, and I shut the door before climbing into the driver's seat. Wait, where is Valerian, Zoe? I answer, starting the car. By the way, we are going to registry tomorrow. I am changing his last name, like hell you are, hyphenated then. Either way, he is getting my name, I tell her pulling out of the car park. She never bothered arguing after that and remained quiet. When I pulled up at the hotel, she looked at me. I thought we were going to an appointment. We are. The pack doctor is coming here, I tell her, and she glares at me. No, suit yourself, I tell her getting out and walking around to open her door. Which is it, Marin? I carry you or you walk, her canines slip out, and her eyes blazed with her fury. I will walk, she snaps before getting out and slamming my door. She stalks off toward the entrance. Chapter 44 And you have been getting nosebleeds how long? Dr. Pat asks. A while, she answers. She kicked up a huge fuss when I refused to leave and I was curious as to why So had refused to leave the room, and she only gave vague answers whenever he asked any questions, which was beginning to annoy me. Answer his questions, I snap her. Forcing my aura out over her and she shudders before blurting out an answer. 
Four years, did she have any resistance to your aura? She answered rather quickly, Doc asked, and I could see the concern in his eyes as he peered down at her. I shake my head, I barely used my aura, Valerian would have been able to fight what I just used, but there was no resistance like her own didn't exist at all. Her blood pressure is low, very low. She is also underweight, the doctor says, looking over the top of his clipboard at me. He had been running tests non-stop while his assistant took notes. What about unusual bruising? He asks, and she shakes her head. I shove my aura out. She growls and jolts in her seat. Yes, she spat through gritted teeth before glaring at me. Any at the moment? I raised an eyebrow at her about to use my aura before she blurted an answer before I had to. Yes, my ribs, can I see? I would rather you don't, Marin, remove your shirt, or I will do it for you, I warn her. Can't you make him leave? What about confidentiality, or is that not practiced in this pack, she spits at the doctor. You are his mate. He has every right to be here being the Alpha. I am sorry, Luna, I am not your SHT Luna, she says, and I growl at her. Marin rolls her eyes before tugging her shirt off, but I was not expecting to see her so purple and blue. Her skin across her ribs looked like she had been beaten. Red and purple blotches covered her ribs and back. See, must be low iron, see just my ribs she says before she starts to pull her shirt on. I snatched it from her, standing up and spinning her to the doctor, who also gasped. What are you doing? Your back is worse than your ribs, I snap at her, and she looks under her arms, twisting, trying to see. This bruising comes and goes. She doesn't answer to busy inspecting herself. Pardon. She asked, looking up at the doctor. Does the bruising remain, or come and go? She chewed her lip nervously. Marin. I asked. Her tongue pokes the side of her cheek, and she looks at the ceiling for a second. It stays, she murmurs before looking at the doctor who was actually looking at me. I was confused. What? I ask and Marin hastily tugs her top on covering herself. It's infidelity markings, the more people the mate is with, the more it affects the bond, I haven't been with anyone since finding her, I tell him. That may be so, but how many have you been with since Marin knew you were her mate, he looks at Marin in question. I have known he was my mate for just over four years now, she answers, and my stomach drops. I knew that, but to count that many times I had s asterisk x. I swallowed, looking at the doctor. Those are from me. I ask, and the doctor nods. They are called a taint or infidelity marks. Every time you are with someone, it taints the bond. Marin is your bond. Therefore, it taints her. They are apparently quite painful but if it has been four years, she probably has a good pain threshold of it now, be more like a normal bruise, except it scars the bond, but it will go away, right? I ask, not wanting to be the blame for her remaining permanently DD like that. Yes, after a while, quicker if you mark her, as long as you remain only with her, of course, he leans forward and pauses, bracing his hands on his knees and sighs. Your bond is toxic, and it is essentially poisoning her and eventually. Please don't take this the wrong way, Alpha, but you have been with a lot of women for her body to be deteriorating at such a rate, most of the time this the reaction of a rejected bond and in the advanced stages, what do you mean? She is dying Alpha, at this rate, it could only be a couple of years especially if you remain sleeping with other women. You will kill the bond and, in turn, kill her, Marin gasps. Wait, but people live like this for decades, 
not years, I. She glances at me. I have researched it, she states. Yes, but you are rogue and also young. I haven't seen this sort of deterioration in a patient before. Given Alpha Lucian's reputation with other women, I am afraid you are deteriorating quicker than most I have seen, which explains your lack of aura, also all your other symptoms, so, how do we fix it? You mark and mate her. Remain close to build the bond. Bonds are fragile, Alpha. They are supposed to be taken care of, not abused, he says, glancing away. It was like being punched in the gut. So I did this? I did all of this? I nod, but Marin was shaking her head. No, we will find another way, Marin says. There is no other way, I am marking you, and that is final, Doc clears his throat, and I look over at him. May I make a suggestion? Yes, please, Marin says and huffs. I understand, Marin, you don't want him to mark you. That is, unfortunately, the bond. It hurts, I get it. I get that betrayal is unforgivable, and you have been living with this a long time clearly, what was he doing? Doc looks at me before frowning. Maybe if you mark him until you are comfortable accepting the bond, it will help strengthen it and slow it down, but eventually, he will have to mark you, no, I will just mark her and be done with it, Alpha, I don't recommend forcefully marking her. You need to understand that you doing that could hurt her more, but you just said, he scrubs a hand down his face. I know what I said, but your bond has been weakened. Unless Marin wants you to mark her, you could make her worse. You need to remember you being with another woman was basically like rejecting her repeatedly. The bond is damaged. You need to repair it before forcefully marking her. You marking her will not only make her hate you but may shock her system, what if she never lets me mark her? We will cross that bridge when we come to it. I would like to rebook for a month's time he says, and I nod while Marin also nods, to which I was relieved she would agree. Maybe hearing this may have scared her. It petrified me. I just found her and may lose her all because I was an idiot. I made myself feel sick. I rebooked her appointment and saw them out while Marin waited in the living room. When I came back out, she was staring out the window. Marin, she nods turning around before walking toward me. We should head back, she states, about to move past me when I grab her. We need to get back, she says though she looks on the verge of tears. I know you hate me, but please, just mark me, I will think about it, come on, she tries to step away, but I shove her, pressing her against the wall. She struggled, trying to push me away. I know I did this. Let me fix it, I snap at her. Lucian, she growls, which was more like a purr than any threat. No, you aren't leaving my apartment until you mark me. Stop being stubborn. I know I fked up but don't let me be the reason you die. Think of Valerian, hate me but me mark me, don't kill yourself because of me. I scream at her before shoving my aura over her. I used a little too much, and she cowered away from me and my heart twisted painfully in my chest. I drop my aura before dropping my head on her shoulder. My breathing was heavy, along with my anger. However, it wasn't aimed at her but myself. Just take me home, you want me to beg? I will beg, I told her before dropping on my knees. I didn't care how stupid it was, I would do it. Whatever she asked, I would do it. Please, if not for yourself. Do it for Valerian, don't leave him because of me, don't do that to our son, I plead before it becomes too much. I couldn't live with the guilt if I kiled her. I couldn't. I bury my face in my hands. 
utterly ashamed of what I caused her, I did this, I did this to her. I made her hate me. I ruined our bond. I couldn't remember the last time I cried, but this news was gut-wrenching. I couldn't take it, knowing I did this. The guilt weighed too heavily, and I knew I would never be able to live with myself if she died. I feel her fingers brush through my hair, making me glance up to see her eyes rimmed with tears. For Valerian, she whispers, and I nod. Please, I beg her, gripping her legs and she nods before looking away. Chapter 45 Marin I wasn't expecting the answer I received from the doctor, I wasn't even aware the bond could be damaged, sure I was used to the pain, but to know he hurt our bond? Nothing felt lessened to me. I still felt for Lucian despite not wanting to, still craved him despite hating everything about him. I just wanted to go home and snuggle my son, smell his scent and let him soothe my racing mind. Yet the way Lucian looked at me, I could see his fear clearly edged onto his face. Could see how much the doctor's words scared him as he pressed his face into my neck. Lucian finally understood the weight of actions, and I could tell the burden was heavy for him to carry. His grip on my arms was tight like he thought I was about to drop before his eyes. My heart twisted painfully in my chest with the way his voice cracked as he spoke. You want me to beg? I will beg, Lucian told me before dropping on his knees. He clutched my legs, and if the wall wasn't behind me, I would have toppled over. I could feel his warm breath caress over the skin under my blouse where it had ridden up. I felt the shake of his shoulders and knew he was falling apart. I know I shouldn't feel bad for him after everything he had done, and maybe it was the bond, but the way Spoke told me he knew the pain of losing a mother even if he didn't know her. I wondered what sort of man he would be if she raised him. Would he be the mate I needed him to be, the father he needed to be for our son? Most of all, I wondered if I could ever forgive him, even if it was only for Valerian. Please, if not for yourself. Do it for Valerian, don't leave him because of me, don't do that to our son, he choked out, and before I could stop myself, I ran my fingers through his wanting to soothe the agony I could hear bleeding into his voice. For Valerian, I whispered, the words not sounding my own as I thought of my son. The person in this world that held all my broken pieces together, the child I carried to Terran, the child I raised and loved. The one person who loved me back. Please, Valerian begs, and I glanced down at him to see him staring up at me. I tear my gaze away. I promised myself I could do it on my own, and I felt like doing this meant I was giving in, tossing everything I worked hard for away. But I wouldn't toss my life away. I could not bear the thought of Valerian being in this world alone without me. Marin. Lucian whispered, and I looked down at the man on his knees, hanging onto me like he could somehow put me back together if he squeezed hard enough. I watched his eyes brim with tears, and my hand moved from his hair to cup his face on instinct. His stubble was rough against my palm, and I brushed a stray tear as he blinked, and it careened over. I'll do anything, but don't make him grow up without a mum, Lucian whispered and his lip quivered as he leaned into my hand before kissing my palm, sparks danced across it, and I bit my lip and looked away from the broken man before me. I mark you, that doesn't mean you own me, and you don't force my hand, I promise, he says, pulling away and I snort, my own tears spilling when I look back down, and he is holding out his pinky. I'll even pinky promise. You know you can't break one of those. They are sacred, I chuckle. He nods before standing, and I look up at him. You won't use your alpha voice on me. You won't mark me unless I let you, I ask him, but he shakes his head. I won't promise not to mark you, I won't watch you wither away because you are too stubborn, I won't let you get to that point Marin, 
so don't ask me to promise you that, ask for anything else but that, but if I mark you, you can just turn around and do the same, I tell him. I won't. I can promise you not today, though, he asked, and I sighed. He holds his pinky up and wiggles it, and I roll my eyes. I promise to make it up to you, I promise to not use my alpha voice on you anymore if you promise to mark me before we leave this apartment, I chewed my lip while considering what to do, but he was right, I would be k asterisk g myself out of stubbornness if I refused. And if I refused, he would probably mark me anyway and take his chances. Marin. Lucian said, pressing closer, so his chest pressed against mine. He held his pinky up, and I felt my lips try to tug in the corners over the silly little thing I had with Valerian. Okay, I tell him, gripping it with mine. Lucian lets out a breath and dips his face toward mine and I press further into the wall I am caged against. His nose schemes across my cheek to my ear. My heart thumps erratically in my chest at what I agreed to. Thank you, he whispers next to my ear. His scent overwhelmed my senses, and I leaned into him, soaking up his scent and inhaling deeply. When I felt his hand slip into my hair. A shiver runs up my spine, and he turns his head, offering me his neck. Please, Marin, just claim me. It can mean whatever you want it to mean. Just do it, he murmurs, and I in a deep, shaky breath. I could do this, right, but at the same time, I hated giving him the wrong idea. Yet my mouth watered at his intoxicating scent, overwhelming the part of me that was denying him, and I felt my canine slip from my gums before sinking them into his neck. Lucian gripped my hair and pressed so close I could feel every hard line of muscle that remained hidden beneath his shirt. My teeth sink in deeply, and warmth blooms in my chest before I feel the tether binding him to me snap in place. Lucian shudders against me, and his emotions slain into me like he just slapped me. Guilt, overwhelming guilt so strong I nearly choked on it. Yet also immense relief that I marked him. I wasn't sure what to think as my teeth pulled from his skin, and I ran my tongue across the mark, sealing it. Lucian doesn't let me go. Instead, he leaned against me and pressed his weight against me, when he turned his face toward mine, he leaned down, pressing his forehead against mine. Now you own me, he whispers before glancing at my blood-smeared lips. He moves his hand cupping my face before brushing his thumb across my lip and wiping his blood off. Now you have my heart, and it's your choice whether or not you break it, he said before pressing his lips to my cheek. But please don't, he murmurs, and I moved my hand to the center of his chest. I could feel his heart thumping beneath it rapidly like a hummingbird's wings fighting against stormy winds, and he sucked in a deep breath at my touch. Don't make me have to, I tell him before looking away. Lucian nods, dropping his head on my shoulder and inhaling my scent as he presses his face into the crook of my neck, and I had to fight the reaction my body had when his breath swept over where his mark should be laid. Every part of me urged me toward him and made me want to curl up on his lap and let him hug away the five years of pain, let him fill the void that was caused by him. However, I knew that was the bond speaking and that his emotions were bleeding into me as if they were my own. We should get back to Valerian, I tell him, and he nods before stepping back. Chapter 46 The drive back was quiet however, not awkward, just a comfortable silence. I believe me marking him suddenly made everything more real. It was, in a sense, easy to play off that he is my mate easier to deny our bond or our weak one anyway. Now though, people would find out, the entire city would realize Lucian had been marked, the paparazzi would go berserk, and I now I worried what that meant for Valerian. I could handle the dramas the media would portray. Valerian was a child and I knew once it was out, 
a lot of people would have something to say about it. Also, I could already imagine the rumors. People would believe that he knocked up some rogue and was forced to take me as his mate, the things I could see them saying about me in papers would sting me but could damage my son. I was used to negativity, yet no child should have to deal with that. I think we should move the Alpha meeting, I whispered. I hated the idea of confronting my father, yet I knew it would be worse if he found out via a news article. I knew I should care what he believed after everything. I was an adult now, and he no longer controlled my life, but for some reason, it nagged at me. Some part believing that he shouldn't find out through a news outlet. You want to push it back? Lucian asks. I shake my head. Move it forward. Once the media gets their hands on this story, it will blow up, it should be announced to stop it hurting Valerian. Anyone says anything about our son Marin, and they won't have a city to live in, you can't just kick people out of city, that is not the answer, Lucian, and that is not what I am worried about, then what are you worried about? Worried about what version of our strange, whatever. I sigh, rubbing my temples before looking at him. They are going to say some horrible about you being with a rogue Valerian has only just found about you, well about who you are, and I worry that what they say about both of us will have an impact on him, then I tell them the truth, simple, it's not that simple. You have a reputation to uphold in this city Lucian, one that holds power, I don't care about my reputation Marin, they can say what they want about me, they do anyway. But if you think I am going to let you take the fall for all it, you are mistaken, they will say I am gold digger, someone who trapped you, probably even say Valerian isn't yours, that they can't say, you can tell by his aura, plus DNA will shut them up, my father is going to lose his mid, I mutter, shaking my head. Surprisingly, my father took it pretty well, Lucian adds making me think of Callan and my meeting with him earlier, I saw your father earlier today, I admit looking back out the window. Did he threaten you if he did tell me? I will handle it, Lucian says. You would really go against your father for a rogue? For you and Valerian, I would go against the entire world if needed, Lucian says, and I chew my lip. I could feel he meant what he said. Feeling him made his words hold more meaning and I didn't know what to think about him. He could lie through words, but not through the bond, so to feel that he meant exactly what he said kind of threw me off. He didn't threaten me. He told me to let you mark me, he chuckles. Yet, yeah, he is a good father, strict, but he means well, mostly, is that why he tried to get you to marry my sister, no idea what he meant by that. He has hated your father for decades. It makes no sense to me, Lucian admits, and I could feel his worry through the bond, making me realize he too noticed his father's change in attitude. Are you worried about your father finding out? Lucian asks as we pull into the hotel parking space. He stops the car. Yes, and no. I will be relieved I don't have to keep it a secret, but also scared of everyone's reaction, why didn't you just tell him, I raise an eyebrow at him and he laughs. Yeah, that was a dumb question, he adds. Do you think he would have kicked you out if he knew? I have thought of that actually, thought about telling him, especially once I found out you were in fact, my mate, then why didn't you? Would have saved you being homeless, your father was not the only one that worries about his reputation, Lucian. When he found out I was pregnant, he tried to get the doctor to abort him, sweep it under the rug so no one would know and I could still take my place as Alpha. Like Valerian was some dirty secret, Lucian growls at my words and his knuckles turn white as he grips the steering wheel. I couldn't do it, so he kicked me out. I believe the reaction would have been the same or worse if he knew you were his father, you think he would have pinned you down and made you abort if he knew? 
No, I believe he would have killed me or come after our son once he was born to use a tool against you. I couldn't allow that, and now, what's changed, he has you. I know you will keep him safe, I admit. I could tell just by his reaction to having a son. Zoe said it herself too. She knew Lucian's intentions were good, unlike some we had come across over the years. Can I ask how you came into the possession of a hotel, being rogue, Lucian asks, looking out at the place I called home, my village. I loved this place, not just because of what it had given us but because of where it came from and the history behind it. It was given to Valerian and me. We inherited it by your grandparents? No, by the woman who owned it, when you kicked me out of the pack house. I went home or tried to anyway. Dad was gracious enough to let Valerian in the house after my mother begged him because it was raining, the next morning, Dad tossed some money at me, and he said he never wanted to see me again, that I was causing problems between him and Mum, so I went back to my car. Grabbed a few things walked here and met a woman, I told him. I looked over at the doors where the main front counter was. I could still picture her clearly like it were yesterday. Valerie sitting out the front with a smoke between her lips, rough as guts but with a heart of gold, she was a tough woman, a remarkable woman. I thought she was someone staying at the hotel, I chuckle. She was rogue also. She gave us a fresh start, offered me a job, paid for my schooling, she gave me hope. Then when she died, she left it all to me, is that how you met Zoe and Macy? No, I met them at the maternity ward. When I was given the job we needed help to clean it up, the place was a dump, she gave them jobs too, said we would build our own village that family is what you make, so once it was running and I found out about it inheriting it, that's what I did, I built our village, our village of rogues. I guess I owe her one. She seemed like a good woman, she was, I could only dream of being half the woman she was. No words could describe how great she was, have you got pictures of what it looked like before? I honestly never knew the place existed, Lucian laughs. You want to see? I laugh before opening the door. Come, I will show you, I tell him. Lucian hops out of the car before locking it and follows me toward the front entrance. Walking in, the bell sounds and the secretary looks up. Coffee? No, we are fine, Jenny. Shouldn't you be knocked off? I ask her, knowing Emily should have been in for the afternoon shift. I knocked off an hour ago, Emily never showed, and I have been trying her cell but no answer that was very unlike Emily. She never missed a shift. She may have come down with that bug that's going around, Jenny tells me. I nod. Knock off. I will handle the front desk until I can find someone to come in, actually, I don't mind. I could use the overtime if that is all right. I turn to face her, and she looks down, fiddling with her fingers. Your son. She nods her head. Jenny was in her fifties and had a son, who was constantly in trouble, especially with the police, and she managed to get him into rehab a few weeks ago, making me wonder what was going on. With everything going on lately, I hadn't had a chance to ask how he was doing. He sometimes helped the gardeners here and the handy woman. Everything all right? I ask her. Yeah, it's fine, she answered too quickly. Jenny? I didn't want to ask because you bailed him out last month already, and I still owe you for that, you don't owe me anything, so what has he done now? You know we have emergency funds for staff, it's there to be used, to help when someone gets stuck, her eyes dart to Lucian for a second, and I completely forgot he was still behind me. I glanced back at him, and he looked at me. Nothing, he is doing great actually, but the hospital is making him leave, 
I thought it was a three-month program. It was supposed to be, but he isn't a priority on the waiting list, but if he already got in, he should be fine to stay. I am assuming you are talking about some rehab facility or medical facility. Lucian answers behind me. She looks at him for a second before looking at me. She then does a double take of Lucian, her eyes zeroing in on the mark on his neck. It was no secret in the hotel that Lucian was my mate, yet we rogue stuck together, and I suddenly worried what the other woman would think. I knew they would be happy I had a mate but hoped they didn't think they still couldn't come to me. You marked him, she asks. Chapter 47 Yes, but it can't get out at the moment, now don't change the subject. What do you need? They are kicking him out unless he is a paying patient. They said they haven't got the beds for a rogue, she answers. It's only at half capacity, Lucian growls behind me. Jenny looks down. It's because his rogue Lucian, no one helps rogues, you should have seen us getting this place running. We couldn't even get a handyman in without blackmailing them, I tell him and he seemed appalled at my words. Considering who his father was, he didn't seem to hold the same views of rogues, well, at least not as strongly. How much? I ask her, knowing how hard she tried to get him in there. 311,000, she breathes before rubbing both hands down her face. Use the funds. It's what it is for. When he gets out, he can come work at the hotel for a bit, I tell her. Knowing that was a big chunk out of the emergency rogue funds, not that anyone would complain, it's what it is for. Don't worry about it. I will handle it, Lucian says behind me. It's fine, Lucian. We have the money here, I don't care about the money. They gave him a place there. If he is doing well and not causing trouble, they have no reason to kick him out, that place relies heavily on donations and taxpayers' money. I'm assuming it's the main hospital since rogues can't use the private ones, she nods. I will take care of it, if not. I will place him in one of the private ones if they kick up a stink, but they won't. My pack funds half of that hospital, Lucian tells her with a shrug. But I will need his information, Lucian tells her, and she looks around her desk before grabbing a sticky note and writing his name and daub on it and address. She hands it to him, and Lucian folds it placing it in his pocket. Are you sure, we have fund for this sort of stuff? I tell him. Positive, but I would like to know more about this fund you have for your employees, he answers. Thank you. Alpha, Jenny nods, and I see her shoulders relax like a ton of weight had just been lifted off her shoulders. Go home, Jenny, rest, I tell her, but she shakes her head. I am good until you find someone to take over, she says just as Tatum walks in. The bell sounds, and I glance over at the door. Ah, just the man I want to see, Lucian says and Tatum raises an eyebrow at him. Ah, yeah. Didn't you want me to keep watch again? Tatum asks him, unsure. Nope, change of plans, I will tonight, but I have another job for you, he motions toward the desk. You want me to move it? Tatum asks, confused. Nope. I want you to man it. Marin is down a staff member, what? Tatum asks before staring at Jenny. Yeah, I don't think that is a good idea, are you saying I can't answer some phones and work the front desk? Tatum asks like I just insulted his intelligence. It's more than answering phones, I tell him. Can't be that hard, Tatum says, walking around the desk. Jenny looks up at him wide-eyed before looking at me. See, he can handle it, Lucian says. Why could I tell this was a bad idea? I pinch the bridge of my nose and shake my head. Lucian, 
he is a security guard, not a secretary, I explain. See, killed two birds with one stone, he is now guard and can do whatever Jenny was doing, this is a bad idea, I am sure I can find someone else, nonsense, Jenny will show him, and you can show me these photos, Lucian says, nudging me toward my office out the back. I glance at Jenny, and she shrugs before getting up. Tatum takes her seat, and she starts explaining things to him and how to use the different phones. With a heavy sigh, I give in, though he would definitely be the most buff secretary we have had manning the counter. He looked out of place behind the desk with its pink stationery. Unlocking my office door, I step in and move to one of the bookcases grabbing down the hotel photo album. I sit at my desk, and Lucian comes over to stand beside me. Opening the front page, there was an old black and white photo of Valerie's parents from when they owned it. I pull it out and pass it to him. In the photo were a man and a woman holding a baby, which Valerie said was her. That doesn't look too bad. Lucian states and I snort before flicking through to when I first came here and the photos Zoe and I took. I passed them to him before also grabbing one out Macy's brother took of us facing the ruined hotel with our backs to the camera. All four of us standing out the front. Valerie was also in it, cigarette between her fingers as she looked at the rundown place. I hand it to him. This the woman? He asks, and I nod. And Macy, Zoe, he says. So you all started it together. The place looked like a dump, he states. It was, so the four of you did all this, he asked, sounding incredulous. Yep, four rogue and three babies restored this entire place, I tell him. Who took the photo, Macy brother, he didn't help. I raise an eyebrow at him. What are you trying to say? Nothing, just four women, fixed all of this, we may be women, but we are resourceful. Besides, Macy is more manly than her brother. She fights like a guy too, so stay on her good side, he laughs, handing them back. Noted, she definitely looks like a scrapper, oh, she is. I watched her beat a man with a ZOKG bag of flour once. She hauled it around like it weighed nothing, what he do? He asked her how much? How much for what? How much for a night Lucian, he thought because she was a rogue, she was prostitute, that was when we first opened up. It was a bit of shock when they found the place was run entirely by rogues. We ended up with a few creeps in at first, so how did you handle that? A few of the older ladies started bringing their sons in for the night shifts. Day shifts were easier. Macy would turf anyone that looked at us wrong, I laugh. Come on, we should check Valerian and give Zoe a break, I tell him, and he follows me through the hotel to the apartment. I was stopped a few times by different staff, and by the time I got back to the apartment, it was dark. Walking in, Zoe was doing puzzles with the kids. She smiled as she glanced over the back of the couch at me before her eyes narrowed on Lucian and her lip pulled over her teeth. She stood abruptly, pointing an accusing finger at him before remembering the kids were in the room. I had no idea why she was mad, but I could tell she was livid about something. She stepped over the kids and moved toward him. Lucian, completely unaware of her anger, says hello to her when she opens the door behind him and shoves him out, slamming it shut behind her. I moved to the kitchen window and peered out, and Lucian had his hands in the air. I cracked the window open a little to eavesdrop. You keep your creepy sniffing friend away from my daughter, she snarls. I glance at Casey, wondering what happened. Valerian looks up at me. Aunt Zoe is upset because we asked what shampoo and washing liquid she used, Valerian explained, which only made me more confused. You tell him to jeep his sniffer away from my daughter, 
he just liked the soap you use, Lucian tried to explain. Casey said he sniffed her repeatedly, Casey growls at him. I will speak to him, but it was nothing bad. He just said the soap smells nice, geez, it's creepy. You don't go around sniffing people's kids, if that don't set off alarm bells in your head, nothing will, my beta is not a creep. He would never harm your daughter Zoe, Lucian defends Dante. Keep him away from my daughter, Zoe huffs before going back to the door. She steps in and straightens her clothes, going back to the kids like nothing happened. Lucian stepped in, looking awkward but the tension left the moment Valerian spotted him and jumped up off the floor. Dad. He squealed, rushing over and Lucian caught him and picked him up, kissing his cheek and hugging him tightly. I missed you, Valerian gushes, squeezing tight. I missed you too, Lucian tells him before setting him on his feet. Zoe watches them and I noticed Casey did too before looking up at her mother and snuggling against her. It must be hard seeing Valerian with his father. Casey saw hers but usually only for s minutes when he would stop in randomly before telling her some lie about needing to go to work. Yet she hadn't seen him since Officer Richards found out. Are you staying for dinner? One of the chefs sent up stuffed capsicums, you'll like those, there is plenty there. She always sends up too much, Zoe says. Having calmed down, her eyes dart to Lucian's neck, and she raises an eyebrow at me before smiling. Of course, she would be happy. I look at her when Lucian speaks. I was hoping to stay the night. Tatum is playing secretary in your foyer, and since Dante is definitely off the table now. Lucian says, looking at me. You can stay for dinner, but we don't need a guard, please, Mum. he can sleep in my bed, I'll share with him, Valerian whines. I tell him. That's not necessary, Val. We have a couch, but your father has, I stop knowing he admitted to wanting to stay, proving he has nothing better to do. One night, and only one, Valerian. I tell him before also looking at his father, so he knows not to ask for a second night. Ah, see, I get to stay for the night, Lucian tells him while Valerian tugged on his hand, dragging him towards his puzzle. Join our Facebook and WhatsApp group for more updates, link is given in description, rest audiobook will be continued in next episode.